Hey guys, welcome to the Challenge Podcast. I'm Coach Steve. And I'm Coach Nick. And we're going to be talking about everything fitness, health, and the challenge. Let's get on with the show. What's up, guys? Coach Steve here, and welcome back to another episode of the Challenge Podcast. In today's episode, I'm joined with Max's second place finalist for the January Challenge, Dwayne Hartwig. Dwayne, welcome to the Challenge Podcast. Thanks, Steve. Dwayne, just a few weeks ago, you found out not only did you make the top three, but you took out second place in the January Maxis Challenge. How has the past couple of weeks been like for you? Um, well, pretty good, actually. I've sort of stopped training a little bit just to uh, relax after the amount of effort sort of put in for 12 weeks to uh, get my body back into a little bit relaxed. But yeah, I was very shocked to get yeah, obviously coming second place and very happy at the same time for it to happen. So yeah, very exciting. Well, mate, you should be so proud of the effort that you put in. You know, you blew all of us away with your amazing result, which I'm sure we're going to chat about here today. Now, Dwayne, I know a little bit about you having read your profile I and mean, you've been around the challenge for quite some time. So, Dwayne, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from, what you do for work, and who is Dwayne? Uh, yeah, I'm um, from Wodonga, so, uh, yeah, regional town, manager of the road crew. So, uh, we do a lot of traveling that around the country, always on the road pretty much. Yeah, I pretty much started the first challenge in 2013 before my marriage and yeah, has pretty much started at least once or twice every year. But obviously most times I don't actually go through to the end. A lot of times life gets in the way and you uh, yeah, don't get all the way to the end. So the last couple of times, yeah, I've gotten all the way to the end. So since November last year, I think I'm down 25 kilos and that's, yeah, definitely thanks to the challenge. So Wow. Amazing. Mate, you're on the road a lot and you're out from a regional town. So what do you mean by on the road? Are you driving or are you traveling interstate doing jobs? Like what's that like? Yeah, definitely driving a lot and in trucks. I've been down on the, uh, what is it, the Elk Park Raceway for the last week or two, uh, helping out there with the Ashcock crew and stuff. And yeah, obviously next week I'm heading to Elk Springs for three weeks. So obviously through the challenge, if you can see that here, I obviously do a lot of my workouts and that at home. I set up a home gym to make it easy when I'm home. Mm-hmm. Spent the 11 weeks doing that. For the last week of the challenge, I was actually down in Sorrento. So I went and joined an Anytime Fitness down there to get through that last week of the challenge. So that was probably the hardest thing. But I'm so used to being home and then everything changes right at the last moment. So. Yeah. Look, we have many challengers who are on the road a lot for work, right? Let that be truck drivers working interstate or FIFO workers traveling to Western Australia, then to the East Coast and back and forth every other month. Could you start by maybe telling us what is it like when you're traveling, right? You don't have your home gym. What is your go-to? Do you normally go to, let's say, an anytime gym or do you go casually somewhere or do you train in your hotel or something like that? Like, What's your normal go-to to keep training while you're traveling? I definitely would say there's no normal. I used to always go to a gym, but then once I built my own gym, I sort of kept my gym membership always trained here. So when I go away now, a lot of the times I'll take uh, weights with me and do it in the motel room. And honestly, the last week of this challenge, I've actually joined an anytime gym down there and trained in there for the week. So yeah, it's definitely changes every every time I try to do it. It always changes because there's always something something different going on in a different place and uh, you just got to yeah, pretty much adapt to whatever your circumstances are at the time. Yeah, I mean, that's really admirable that you're making it adapt to the situation that you have, right? Many people, and I'm sure you see this within your career, right, where you're traveling so much, you don't have a set routine, you don't have a normal, and of course, you're like, ah, screw it, I don't really need a train, I'm away for two weeks, I'm going to Alice Springs for three weeks, I'm down in Sorrento, you know, I'm here, there, and everywhere. It's easy to go, oh, well, I'll just it's not the right time I'll train at another day. Right. But that other day turns into the next day, turns into the next day. Next, you know, 10 years later, you're like, geez, I put on a bit of weight. Right. And you're in the other stage of your life where you're like, well, I need to make some time now. So it's really admirable that you have making this a priority, right. Despite the situations that you have with your work. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd say, yeah, obviously before November last year, what you're talking about exactly where I was for the two years before that, which is why I was. I was at 124.1 kilos, I think. Mm. It was the heaviest I've ever been. And obviously, by the end of this challenge, I was down under 99 kilos. So, Congratulations. Yes. Thanks. Now, Dwayne, talk to me a little bit about your – I'm still talking about work now. You work, you're a manager and you're working with colleagues. What's it like when you're – 
away with your colleagues and you know, let's say you're going out for lunch. Is it a, let's go down to the little tucker shop and get a burger and some chips and a big M or like, what's it like when you're, let's say doing the challenge with some of your coworkers? Is it easy? Is it difficult? What's the situation like? Definitely. I say it's hard because I remember even just, honestly, sometimes I have to go buy the meals for them and they'll want hamburgers and things like that. I'll buy them and be smelling them in the car, bring them back to them and just knowing I can't eat them. But mm-hmm. in my head, yes, the thing I keep coming back to is 12 weeks. It's not a lot of time to change your whole life. If you can just keep focusing and say it's just 12 weeks out of 90 years, that's not a lot. Mm. And it does change a lot of your life. Yeah, so it sounds like you went a little bit like that cold turkey being like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it, even though you had those temptations of the smell in the car and such, right? Yeah, exactly. But then, yeah, as soon as you finish the challenge, those temptations uh, make it very easy to go back and uh, sort of eat. Like I said, the last three weeks have probably been just to relax and get my body back and just eat what I wanted. But I'm obviously going to do the challenge again now and do it three times in a row. This one's obviously just to maintain everything pretty much to all turn 40 in August. So, Yeah, yeah. Look, Dwayne, let's talk about why, right? So you kind of already alluded to your first challenge was in 2013, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you've often done one or two challenges each year since, right? Yeah, that's correct. Or, or started. Started, yeah. Started, yep. started, sorry, yeah. So how many challenges have you started with us? Do you know the number? Oh, no, I wouldn't know the number. I know one, two, three, I've probably only finished four or five out of, mm-hmm. yeah, what's that, seven or eight years, so. Yep. Yeah. So you've done lots of, lots of challenges with us. One of our longest standing challenges, basically almost yes. eight years now within the challenge lifestyle. And you've probably seen the challenge grow from those early days to what it is now. And I'm sure your kind of knowledge and experience has changed over that time as well. But if you were to jump in that little time machine and go back to 2013, can you tell us a story about why you chose to start that 2013 challenge? Uh, yeah, back then definitely was out of shape. I know just from oh, doing minor things where you sort of just, I know, run around for about five minutes and realize you're out of breath and it's not a good feeling. And then once you get fit again and you realize you can start running again, you actually feel so much better because I actually, I think it was right before the challenge. It might have been eight months before the first challenge I've done. I actually back to my collarbone, had to get a plate put in there. And when that happened, I'd actually lost a little bit of weight before then, but it just sort of, well, shit, I've got no strength or anything like that. So I actually went, well, I need to start looking at it now because I've never actually done weight training properly before that. And yeah, that's pretty much why. So it gets your strength back. Yeah, yeah. Now, many people join us just for one challenge. They tick that box that they've done fitness for 12 weeks and, hey, I've lost a bit of weight. Great. What made you want to continue to come back year after year and reconnect with the challenge? I suppose because, yeah, life does get in the way a lot of the time. So being in the gym as a lifestyle for four months a year is just not really an option. But if you look at 12 weeks, once every one year, two years or whatever it is, you actually probably can maintain that. And then you go to the gym once or twice a week after that and you don't have to actually be three or four times a week, every week for the whole year, I suppose, is the big thing. So yeah, that's probably why I keep coming back so that I can push for that 12 weeks. And you relax a bit for uh, another few months or whatever it may be. I like that. So it's a little bit of like this wave pattern where you're training hard, hard and fast for those couple of months, let's say three months yeah. or 12 weeks. And then maybe you'd go a little bit more relaxed and kind of like have that little bit of an off tier period. And then you kind of come back and reconnect with it, right? Yeah. 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 I like that approach. A little bit untraditional, but it's a great way to stay accountable, right? If you continue to connect with something like the challenge, it's 12 weeks, hard and fast, focused, it's time driven. You're going, okay, I'm going to do this for 12 weeks. And then I might take a little bit of a break afterwards because I'm, I'm traveling. I'm going to rest a little bit, those types of things. And then you reconnect with it in that next challenge. I like that yeah, approach. Yeah, and yeah. I can imagine that every challenge you did, you slowly got better. And you kind of mentioned maybe some challenges, you didn't complete it the whole way, life got in the way, these types of things. But yeah, you would have learned something each step of the way, right? Yeah, definitely. And it, it definitely a mental side of uh, that is what you're learning is why didn't you succeed at the time? What made you give up? What happened in life that sort of made you go, yeah, no, nah, I'm over for this. You might have only made it three weeks in or four weeks in or two months in, whatever it may have been. Uh, yeah, you realize something in your head stopped you from uh, 
getting to the end. So definitely makes you stronger, I suppose, mentally as well, every time you uh, complete the challenge. So. Yeah. So talking about some of the challenges that you faced over the past eight years of the challenge, could you speak a little bit about some of those reflections you were just alluding to, like maybe the reason why you stopped at week three or stopped halfway through, like what kind of challenges did you face while completing the challenge? Yeah, I think last year, I think I started the one at the start of the year, I'm pretty sure. And then obviously COVID hit, which was a, a big thing. But yeah, I, um, I think it was a week or two in and I actually broke my little toe. <laughs> and when that happened, it's all like, yeah, then we're going to keep training and we're not going to keep training. Like, no, nah, all right. Just, I don't know, mentally, I just thought, no, nah, I'm not even going to bother now because I can't run, I can't do this, I can't do that. And, yeah, just mentally, when something like that happens, you just sort of either keep doing it once or you don't. And I just decided not to. So that's why, obviously, by November last year, yeah, I was at that uh, 124 kilos. Now, when people hear, like, breaking the little toe, right, often the knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, it's just a little toe. Like, you've got four other ones. It's not a really big deal. I think yeah. for me and you, we understand when yeah. you break your little toe, it's a big deal. You know, you lose your balance. You can't step on it. You can't train your lower body at all because you can't push through your legs. And yeah. you can't even pick up those dumbbells and walk to the bench because it's painful. Talking about that experience, what was that like? Did you first try to do some training? And then, I mean, I'm going to assume that you eventually didn't and you kind of gained a little bit of weight. Like, what was it like once you broke your foot? Well, I was out of a little toe and obviously mm. it didn't hurt when I broke it. But obviously, like I said, walking around and things like that, you've got to be mindful and stay off it. And mm-hmm. Yeah, you just I don't know when you get that bit of pain there, you just don't want to, like I said, train legs or anything like that. Yeah, I probably could have trained the upper body and things like that, but mentally, you sort of go, if you can't do that, then I'm not going to bother doing any. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, a big mental challenge, I suppose, to do break a bone and things like that to carry on. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely hard because once you get into this kind of like negative feedback loop you're like oh i can't be bothered and it's like oh, i don't care what i eat i just want to eat like that burger and that ice cream and then i don't even want to train anymore and it's like i don't really care what i look like i'm just in pain and i understand this negative feedback loop just keeps yeah. driving us down what did you do to get out of that slump like did you just pick yourself up and off you go or did you get help like what did you do to get out of that negative whirlwind i think i just got to the end obviously the next point of the challenge in november and went right at this time i'm serious hmm. I don't know, it's a bit hard to sort of think when you start a challenge that you don't always think you're going to get to the end. You think you're going to start and just see how you go. Mm-hmm. You might only get four weeks in and you just say, oh, but every time, especially in November and the last one, just now, you get four weeks in and you just go, oh, I'm actually lost five kilos. And you start seeing the really change and you start going, well, okay, now I'm going to do the next four. Mm-hmm. You want to see another five kilos gone. So, so you're going to get to the end then. It's when you... Uh, probably do four weeks and you don't see much change, that's when you probably get to a point where you think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to bother going to the end because I'm not changing much. But mm. I suppose for me, this one that I'm going to do now, I've got to remember that I'm not going to lose a lot more weight. So I've got to find something else to focus on as far as why I'm going to get to the end of it. So, mm. yeah. I like that. Now, Dwayne, let's talk about how this last challenge, this January challenge, was different to your other attempt. This challenge, you've taken out second place in the Max's Challenge, and we compare that to your other dozen attempts. What was it about this January challenge that was different to the other attempts you made? I don't know. I suppose at the start of it, I just my main focus in my head was I want to make the top 10. That was, mm-hmm. If I can make the top 10, I would say that because I have been doing it for so long. I have made the top 50 a few times, but to make the top 10 would just sort of be... Well, I said that'll be life. I don't have to worry about doing it. I'll be happy. And obviously, got to the end, got second, and I'm still happy, but I still want to do another one again, just knowing that if I don't do one more, I might let it slide a bit. So before I turn 40 in uh, August, I want to make sure I still hold the, I don't know, the strength in that, that I've gained over the last 12 weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you more focused is maybe what you were saying in this January challenge. You really wanted to push it hard before you turn 40. Definitely, that was my main goal because I'm turning 40 and obviously last year I wanted to get under 100 kilos, didn't quite get there. Even though I think the last challenge I lost maybe 18 kilos, mm-hmm. that's probably why I really thought, well, as much as I pushed the last challenge, mm-hmm. I still couldn't get under 100 kilos, but to get that 24 kilos in one challenge probably would have been too excessive, I think. 
for me. So it was actually beneficial that I've done the second challenge in Rome. Yeah. Look, I like the narrative that you're explaining, right? Where often challengers would join the challenge. They look at these beautiful before and after photos um, of men and women who've done the challenge, maybe like yourself, right? In yeah. our marketing or something. And they go, wow, look at that 12 weeks. I want to look like that. So they sign up to the challenge. But what they don't understand is that someone like yourself, Dwayne, you've been doing the challenge for, for eight years, right? You've been within yeah. the fitness industry, right? For all of your 30s, right? Being yeah. involved in fitness and you've slowly gotten better over time. And it wasn't until this last challenge that you really pushed hard that you were able to make that top 10. And yeah. sometimes there's this mixed match of expectations where people sign up to the challenge, go, great, I'm going to be able to achieve that in 12 weeks but little do they know that it's taken 10 years of practice and learning over that time so that they can finally get that result in that three-month window that 12-week window right 100 percent correct yeah and then the other side of your narrative that you're saying is maybe in your previous experiences with the challenge you kind of were going through the motions you signed up to the challenge you didn't really have any big wild goals or ambitious goals you're like oh i'll see how i go maybe i get to week four uh, it's not working for me i'm just going to drop out right maybe that was a mindset you were in in yeah. 2014 yeah. 15 16 right yeah. but then now that you've kind of given it your all you haven't really kind of gone through the motions just let the wheels run you're like yeah okay i'm going to be dedicated to this one this is when you see these results right yes. and we see that narrative often within the challenge where people would sign up to the challenge, they get five, six weeks in, they're like, oh, I'm not seeing any results. And it's like, okay, have you put in that effort? Did you have that hunger in your belly to drive and do it? Or are you just kind of going through the motions and seeing what's going to happen, right? And you finish the 12 weeks and you're like, eh. Or are you going to finish the 12 weeks being like, oh, geez, I gave it my all. And now that I've made the top three, top second place, like you have, Dwayne, right? Yeah. Now, Dwayne, let's talk about change, right? So I'm sure your life has changed over your 30. Joining that first challenge in 2013, you were, what, 31, and now you're almost 40. Can you yep. speak about how your life has changed over the years of completing the challenge? Oh, very significantly, I suppose. Obviously, back then, working just uh, within trucks and that, with work, and then I was from there moving my way into a more of an office job, a managerial job. Still get out on the road, but more in the car now, more than the trucks. So totally different kind of uh, yeah work that I'm doing, but still in the, exactly the same industry and stuff. So that's changed, yeah, how you sort of got to manage your life as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously from then, I was joined a gym, always in a gym, right up until probably three years ago, I think, when I built this house and decided to build a gym inside the house. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, spent the first 12 to 18 months in the house not using the gym at all. <laughs> so it's a mental thing, obviously, and then got to these last two challenges and decided, yeah, I'm going to uh, make sure I use the gym, not yep. spending all the money to make a gym <laughs> and uh, not use it, I suppose. So, yeah. Yeah. So talk to me about your home gym. Is it like garage gym, home gym, or is it? did you have a room built specifically for a gym in this new house of yours? Yeah, so I built pretty much my study slash gym in the new house. Decked out with everything I need other than the only thing I don't have is obviously my leg weight, so I just focus on squats. But uh, other than that, yeah, I set it up as a full gym that uh, can train inside the house. So. Yeah, so you're talking like dumbbells, barbell, squat rack, those types of things? Yeah, yeah. everything, yeah, yeah. 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 Nice, nice. I think uh, it's a, everyone's dream to have a fancy home gym like that, right? Yeah, I think so. I think everyone would probably be jealous and think, oh, he's got that. It makes it easy, but you might have it, but you've still got to change your mindset to uh, use it. So, I like that as well, right? We could have all the resources available to us, literally on a silver platter in front of us, but we still got to do it, right? Yes. It's kind of like that yeah. saying, you can take a horse to water, right? But you can't make a drink. So even if you have these really fancy equipment at home or all the perfect environment, like you still need to just go and do it, right? Yeah. 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 Now, Dwayne, Let's wrap up here with advice. So I'm sure many people have reached out to you over the years and going, wow, you've lost so much weight. Like, what are you doing? How can I do that too? If someone came to you looking to get fit and healthy, lose some weight, or even about to start the challenge themselves, what advice would you give that person? Yeah, I've definitely have had a lot of people over the years come to me and ask them, uh, oh, can I get the training plan? Can I get the eating plan? Can I, what are you doing? How do I do it? And I don't know. I've given it to a lot of people. It all comes down to doing it. At the end of the day, you can give them the plans, give them the eating plans, but you've really just got to structure it and uh, stick to it. It's only 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone's got to sort of, I think, put in their mind. 12 weeks is not a long time. 
Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, when we think about training plans and nutrition plans, if you really wanted to, you could Google like a training plan and get, you know, a plethora of different programs, Google a nutrition plan and find thousands of different nutrition plans and recipes, right? So we have all these things at our fingertips. Let that be the challenge nutrition plan or, you know, whatever one you find online or the the challenge training program, whatever you find online, we have all these resources, but we have to do the thing, right? We have to go into the gym, we have to train, we have to build our lifestyle around it, which you now have done. You know, you've built your home gym, you've started to change um, your your complete lifestyle so that you're now, you're the fitness guy and it shows because now you are now our second place finalist in the the Max's Challenge of of thousands of guys who who started the challenge. You're right up there in the top three. So mate, a big congratulations and you should be so proud of the result you've achieved. You showed us that, you know, even if you've done the challenge before, you can still improve, get better and find make that top 10 like you have yeah thanks Steve. well look Dwayne I'd like to take a moment to thank you for donating your time to be part of the challenge podcast and thank you for inspiring so many people within your own communities but then also within our online communities to you know not only just lose some weight but to live a healthier life so you're making my job easier so Dwayne thank you for doing that thanks Steve thanks for the Max's challenge as well it's been great Thanks for listening, guys. If you like the show, share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes to help us spread the good word. See See you you next time. time.